Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Olds and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's our show where we dive into FRC robots and what makes them work. And today I'm here with team number 4068, Bearbotix from Monument, Colorado. And 4068 were semi-finalists last year at the Utah Regional and had a nice run in 2019 with a regional win and finalists at the two competitions they attended. Now I'm here with Cameron, Gabby, and Zach and they're gonna be talking a bit more about their robot, including uh, their 2020 robot that you're gonna be seeing here, the electrical boards, some of the programming, and what they're doing so far for the 2021 at-home challenges. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in first, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Cameron, we're going to start out with you. We have the 2020 robot here, and I know you're uh, really proud of uh, the ball path that the power cells are taking here, specifically with your intake, but walk me through the entire power cell path here on this 2020 robot. All right, so we have our intake here. This is something we've iterated on in the uh, season between the 2020 and 2021 season. So we have our two sets of rollers here, both powered by one Neo motor, standard Neo, um, and we have rollers that are both a TPU and PETG composite. Um, and we have in here, uh, past the intake, we have our, what we call a vortex roller. It's a Neo 550 that spins on a polycarbonate roller uh, that's outer race spins on it. And that sucks the balls into the final uh, stage of the ball collection, which is our hopper, which singulates our balls. If you can get a good shot in here, uh, we have a su subsystem inside of the hopper that's powered by an independent 775 motor. Um, and that singulates the balls into the shooter. So if you want to come around here. This is our shooter, and we have three sets of wheels inside of our shooter. So we have our feeder wheels, which are the blue um, flex rollers that are powered by a 775. We have our accelerator rollers right here, which start to get the ball up to speed. They're powered by a faster 775. And then our main shooter uh, wheel is a standard Colson that's powered by a Neo wheel. And uh, we use a limelight for tracking so we can get pretty good shot acquisition. And yeah, all of our shooting is automated too with our limelight. Um, so we press the button and it just sets to the target. Let me follow up with you here. I want to talk about this intake a little bit more that you have. Uh, I know you talked about the roller on there, but something that looked really unique to me is that you have square wheels on that intake, it yeah. looks like. So tell me a little bit more about that and your decision process uh, behind using square wheels for that and uh, how well that actually works out for you. Yeah, so this is something we iterated on on our prototyping uh, for this 2021 season. And we actually found that these square reels actually help a lot for squeezing the ball and getting a lot of good traction on the ball. Um, we use a flexible TPU on them to get really, really good grip. And the square wheels, it kind of, uh, yeah, it, it kind of clamps it in. So you mentioned you have TPU on that. It, it, what's the durability on that? Because there's a lot of friction, obviously, with the power cells uh, going up against those. Uh, have you tested that pretty extensively? Yeah, so we uh, start. We actually started off with full TPU rollers, but we found out that the hubs we uh, printed them with hex hubs. Uh, those hubs started to strip, um, but the TPU on the outer race that grabs the balls was pretty fine. Um, so what we did is we converted it to like a PETG core. Um, the core is actually bigger um, than the outer race, the inner race of the roller. So we like spin hot water and then we kind of press fit it together to make a full fledged roller with a strong core, but a really soft exterior that grips the balls very nicely. Sure. Love it. Um, really cool. Here too. Yeah. Really cool stuff going on with that. Let's take a look there. 
Very nice. So how long does it take you to print one of those? About two hours. Well, that's not too bad. So if you need to replace them, you can always yeah. have plenty on hand, right? Yeah. Very cool. Well, let's keep moving on here. I want to talk to Gabby about uh, some of the electrical uh, on the robot. And I know the boards that uh, you made, and you also have some stuff that you're you're showing off publicly to the first community. So tell us a little bit more about all that. So the board that is currently on our robot is the CAN, um, the baby CAN uh, 2, I believe. And it basically replaces um, daisy chaining for motors um, with your canvas. And so it's uh, very cost efficient as well as a lot more reliable because of how flimsy sometimes the connections can be and they often come undone, especially when you're doing defense or um, ramming into other robots. And we found it very beneficial. I think we've been working on it since 2019 and it's very easy to use. Very cool. Gabby, if you don't mind, could you actually take me through a little bit on the packaging of your robot itself and just how you've done some of the electrical on the robot? Um, so a lot of our um, electronics are actually covered right now um, by the intake. So we have this um, side right here. It's a tad messy right now um, just because we've had to, um, with modifications, unplug and replug everything in like five times, but that comes with the trade. Uh, and so... We have um, everything that needs to be accessed uh, easily. Uh, so like our PDP is very easily accessed, which um, is very nice, especially if we need to um, test certain motors or not and um, unplug them. And then we also have some of the more sensitive stuff like the uh, PCM and the VCM. And a thing that we're doing different uh, than past years is that we've been fabricating our boards beforehand. Oh, sure. Um, my freshman, yeah, my freshman year, we uh, actually just used a um, piece of plywood and that was it. It's, we've come a really long way. <laughs> So, so one thing I'm going to ask you, and I asked a, a couple other teams this as well too, is that where does the electrical packaging take place in the hierarchy of the robot? Do they do everything first, say, here, fit this into the spaces we've left you, or do you get some more say in kind of where this stuff goes ahead of time? I wish we got more say, but <laughs> at the end of the day, we kind of do it what, with we can. The battery is the main thing that gets put into consideration when designing the robot just because of balance. Um, but we have come a long way from the amount of space that we've used and compression of our robot and, um, just how we organize wires. And so it's been a good exercise for us just doing what we can with the space we're given. Well, Gabby, shout out to you and your sub team then for, uh, making do with your team and, and hopefully your team gives you that extra time or extra, uh, the thought to, so you can build your stuff first before the mechanical team comes in. Cause that's usually the case in teams we talk to in many circumstances. Uh, so, uh, we're going to move over to Zach, uh, who's going to be talking more about, uh, some of the programming on the robot. And then we're going to be showing off, uh, as he's talking, uh, some of the barrel racing, uh, that's been done on the robot as well too. So Zach, run us through some of the uh, features of the spot from a programming perspective. So uh, first things first, uh, I'll touch on the limelight, which you heard uh, Cameron mention earlier that we use a limelight for our shooter targeting. And how we have that set up, it's just we get the Y value that the, of the target in the limelight camera, and it's run through an equation that calculates our shooter power, and then it revs the motor to that power, and then it'll shoot. So uh, at home challenges coming up here. Um, I know we're going to we're going to be looking at your 2021 robot. You're also uh, building because you modified this robot a little bit, and then you got the 2021 coming up. But for the 2020 robot in particular, talk to me about some of the at home challenges you've been working on with this robot in particular, and, and maybe anything you've had to modify from a programming standpoint as well. Well, we've used it for pretty much everything so far, uh, namely the autonomous challenges, which you'll get to see at some point soon. And uh, yeah, we've been, as opposed to last year where we had a complete hard code of our autonomous, this year we have started using the incredible little tool known as Pathweaver to ease that uh, process of creating the path. And it's proven to be very helpful and effective. 
So can you talk to me a little bit about Pathweaver? What made you uh, want to decide to start using that this year versus in the previous years? Uh, so this year we took a pretty big hit to our programming, I guess, knowledge, you could say, because our lead programmer the last couple of years finally graduated. And he did a whole lot of the work. And without him, we were left in the dust a bit, especially with Autonomous, because he was the one who did a lot of the hard coding. Sure. And Pathweaver was something we knew about, and we caught on to pretty quick and turned out to be very easy to use. I'm combine with code to create a very promising autonomous. Very cool. Well, can't wait to see, uh, of course, more of this on screen that you'll be seeing just a little bit. Uh, but with that said, let's walk over to your 2021 uh, robot you've been uh, starting to work on uh, as well. And I don't know if, if you or Cameron or Gabby want to talk about uh, what's going on with that. Um, I love that you guys have taken the 2020 robot and applied it for this at-home challenge. But then you're also building a 2021 robot uh, as well, too, for even more challenge. So what do you want to run through on the spot here? All right, so this is our 2021 robot. It's still a work in progress. But for right now, we have our uh, chain and tube chassis um, that we made sure it's very stiff. Uh, we have our nice bumper brackets that we've been iterating on for the last two years. Um, we have our electrical board that we have started using ABS for um, out of like prototyping off of our off-season robots. And we have our uh, climber on right now. We did our climber first this year instead of doing it about midway through the season um, so we can have room for the rest of the infrastructure uh, while still having the climber on here first because we found out last year that the climbing was one of the most important parts of the challenge. So so it, it is, but I do have to ask you, in 2021 with the at-home challenges, the climb isn't really a factor at all, so why put that on your robot? Yeah. So we were, we're hoping that we can compete in a couple off-season competitions, Um mainly our Colorado one that we usually compete at, the sure. KCMT. Uh, so uh, climbing was a big factor. And we also want to get experience with good climbers since the, in the past, it's been one area that we lacked in. Uh, so this is our way of getting experience with good sturdy climbers. So so to kind of reiterate a little bit of recap on this, this, this robot can do at-home challenges similar to your 2020, but you're really designing this robot to complete the 2020 infinite recharge yeah. challenge in case you can start to compete uh, in person events. Is that right? Yes. Very cool. Um, well, is there anything else uh, on this robot or your 2020 you want to overview or and let the first community know about it all? I think Gabby has something to say. <laughs> yeah. So one of the big changes from our 2020 robot is that we started to use XT90 and XT60 connectors instead of Anderson connectors. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still have a bit more testing to do so far, but so far we're finding that they're a lot more reliable than Anderson connectors due to the fact that the inside connection is soldered directly to the wire versus with an Anderson connector, you're just plugging a piece of metal into a plastic piece. And so it, there's less of a chance for it to accidentally come undone. So we're trying to make our robot more reliable this year. That's really cool to hear. Uh, I'd be interested to hear more about that too, especially as you keep uh, iterating that process. So check in with us later on. Uh, we'd love to hear more about that. So before we wrap up this interview, let's take a look at a couple of your hyperdrive challenges and how your team has been tackling that challenge. Uh, Cameron, Gabby, and Zach, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to tell us about uh, your team and the experiences that you've had both in 2020 and the 2021 season. Uh, hopefully we get to see this robot out on the field with at, with actual uh, competitions in play. But other than that, we wish your team the best of luck uh, throughout the season. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and first updates now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.